Hi guys, Brandy here. Welcome back to Sewing Back. Um, today we're in the kitchen and we are going to make um, a cake. This week is Teacher Appreciation Week at my son's school and we are doing um, like a, they, did, they have like a theme each day this week for the teachers at our school and the staff. And being that I used to be a teacher and a staff member <laughs> at a school, I know that these things are very much appreciated and it just helps um, the teacher staff feel love. And um, so I signed up this week to do a few things and um, one of them was to make this cake. We have several uh, teachers at our school who are gluten free and because I was gluten free for about 12 years, I, I have a good, um, I guess, I have a good amount of different things I can pull together um, that are gluten free that I know that um, I could take and that people who have those issues, whether it's celiac or um, a sensitivity or whatever, can enjoy something and um, honestly just feel blessed because a lot of times when you have food allergies, it is really hard to participate in these kinds of things. So I was excited to sign up for this part. So I have to get this cake baked. And I thought I would take you along because this cake, I don't care if you're gluten free or not, it is delicious. It is super like sweet and all the things. You have to have like a cup of coffee when you enjoy this cake. And <laughs> you will enjoy this cake. All right, we're just gonna open up our cake um, mix here. We're gonna put it in our bowl because you're gonna do two different mixes for this cake. This is kind of the base, and then the other is, uh, so this will be kind of considered like the crust part of the cake, and the other will be the top, but you bake it all at one time. Um, so we have this in here, and now I have met, I melted my half a stick of butter, uh, or my half a cup of butter, which is one stick. So, I am going to kind of stir that with my cake and then I have to add to that I need to add two eggs. I just kind of wanted to get that a little bit cooler. We don't want to cook our eggs. So these are some of my fresh eggs. And you should always do your eggs in a separate bowl because you sure wouldn't want to ruin um, a nice dish. So we're going to do one, two, or a cake. You don't want to mess that up. So we've got our two eggs and now we're going to mix all of this really well. I'm using my, um, my Danish uh, dough mix. And I really like it because I'm able to hold it kind of like this and really get some muscle behind it. It's just really strong. This is our base. So we're gonna take our greased nine by 13 pan. I just greased it with some coconut oil. And we are going to get this in this pan and we're going to um, thin like thinly cover the pan because you want to think about this like it's a crust <clears throat> and I'll tell you this is like so good with like some coffee but it's also really good in the summer with all the berry, like if you wanted to put some fresh berries after the fact, it would be really delicious. All right. And this is honestly, it's almost like a frosting consistency, but it's not. <laughs> and so, you just you got to get it on here I don't know that this was the right spatula I probably I think if I remember right 
I used to spray my spatula so that it, this wouldn't stick to it, and I should have done that. Matter of fact, I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay. Yes, it helps when you spray the spatula. So this just kind of takes a minute of playing around with it. And you want to try to get it even so that you don't have really thin spots and others that are really thick because you want it to cook evenly. Yes, that helped a lot. So y'all remember that trick. Just take some cooking spray and, and spray your whatever your whatever kind of spatula you're using. And that will help you a lot. Okay, so part one done. That's how easy. Ta-da! It's all done. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna move out my mixer get my ingredients ready for this and we're going to do the second part. So now I'm taking my cream cheese that is softened and I'm cutting it into pieces to make um, smoothing it out in the in the mixer a little bit easier. I'm adding one teaspoon of my bourbon infused um, vanilla that I made. I can link that video um, in the cards. And I also had two eggs in there that I had put in there. And now I am proceeding to add four cups of powdered sugar. And I have to turn my mixer off every so often, scrape down the sides, because that powdered sugar is just so fine it wants to kind of clump onto the sides. Then once it's kind of velvety smooth, um, it does typically have a little bit of like little cream cheese pieces um, in it that's the consistency you want and then you just want to um, pour it over the base and smooth it out and then you're gonna bake it at 350 for 40 minutes my cake just came out it did take me um, in the recipe it says 35 to 40 minutes mine was 40 minutes I set it at 35 came and checked it it still had some jiggle so this is no jiggle and it, you can see how it looks like it got a little crusty on the, the, the outside corners that it's supposed to look like that. Um, that is exactly how it should look. You want to let it fully cool, uh, cool. Once you do, you can serve it or you cover it, put it in the refrigerator, and you can serve it the next day. Um, it will keep up to a week in the refrigerator, but it won't last. I can promise you that it will not last a week. So anyway, I hope that you will give this recipe a try. Um, like I said, if gluten-free is not an issue for you, you can use any yellow cake box cake mix will work just fine. Thank you for watching. Uh, with that, have a great one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.